please press record. Hello, welcome to the EIR program, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Thanks for joining in on this webinar called Introduction to the EIR Program for Teachers. And this will be presented by myself, Pumika Sood, and Niadi Rao. Hello. Throughout the webinar, we will have interactive slides where we encourage you to participate and let us know your thoughts and opinions in the chat box. Next slide, please. All right, let's begin by looking at behind the scenes. The Engineer in Residence program is part of Engineers of Tomorrow, which is managed by Erica Lee Garcia and Rebecca White. And this summer, me, Bhumika, and Niadi had the amazing opportunity to be their summer interns. Next slide, please. So what is Engineers of Tomorrow? Engineers of Tomorrow is a venture of Engineers Without Borders Canada. We partner with engineering companies, professional associations, and educators to transform the engineering profession. We want to make the profession more diverse. We want people in the profession to learn from their failures, innovate, and solve problems of the 21st century. We believe in the power of engineering outreach to shape the future, and that's why we do world-class engineering outreach, and we inspire and instill the capacity in others to do the same. By shaping the perception of the public's perception of engineering, we can change its future. If you want to learn more about this, you can go onto our website at engineersoftomorrow.ca. All right, so another great way to spread awareness about engineering and fulfill our mission to promote engineering is through sharing our engineering story. So I'll start with my engineering story. Let's start at the beginning. So my dad's job enabled us to move around from country to country. I started my schooling in America, continued it in India, and then finished my high schooling from Canada. Having lived and studied in different parts of the world, I was exposed to different people, different cultures, but one thing never changed, my interest in STEM, in STEAM, sorry, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And the feeling that I wanted to be part of something bigger. And because of this, I thought architecture would be a perfect career choice. I could apply my STEM skills as well as grow my artistic abilities, but I never felt I never had that connection or that feeling that I was meant to be doing this. I realized I was missing one crucial thing, the need to make a change in the world. I wanted to contribute in making as small as an impact as possible. And through this, I realized maybe I should explore the world of engineering. Engineering is very diverse and I wanted to have different options. So this made me choose management engineering. And for all of you who don't know what that is, a little about um, management engineering. We learn how we learn to analyze how organizations operate and then we apply engineering skills to increase their efficiency. I've completed my first year at University of Waterloo so far, and I am passionate about continuing to develop my skills. What about you, Niadi? What's your story? So similar to Bhumika, I've always wanted to make a difference in the world. When I was in grade six, I started a club at my elementary school called the Because I'm a Girl Club. And it's basically a club about um, empowering women to sort of take care of uh, their, basically be, make them the providers of their small towns or small cities in uh, rural areas. And I, I held a lot of fundraisers in my elementary school. We sold samosas, we had bake sales, et cetera. And then um, I also joined Me We in elementary school and I also joined Me We in high school. And it's basically another sort of nonprofit organization. Um, I was I ended up becoming the vice president of Midwe in grade twelve. So I've always just wanted to do something that would help change the lives of someone in the world. And another thing that I was passionate about was um, envir the environment. I'm very enthusiastic about environmental sustainability and doing things to help our environment prosper and sort of trying to reduce the effects of climate change. And I've always been interested in that sort of thing. So when I was uh, in grade 11, it was that time frame where you, most people started to decide what they wanted to do in grade 12 and what they wanted to do in the future. And I was sort of struggling. So I had the option of either doing taking the easy route and taking something uh, easy and doing the easy way out while I could have gone into engineering, which 
at the time my brother was a chemical engineer at Ryerson and he was um I saw him sort of struggle like he would stay awake till 4 a.m just to study for his exam and he had to wake up at 6 a.m so he got two hours of sleep because he had to commute all the way to downtown Toronto so it was sort of a struggle for him and I saw him go through that so he would be telling me that oh you should do something a little bit easier like do accounting so I went up and looked into some accounting programs and then looked into what accounting was and I was I was set on my mind that I was going to do accounting in the future I was going to do accounting but then I realized that I didn't really like accounting I don't really like just pure math and I just didn't want to do accounting in the future it wasn't what was going to make me happy so then I sat down and tried to understand what I wanted to do in the future and I realized I was really passionate about the environment so if I wanted to do something that would help the environment in the future, I think that would make me happy. So that's why I decided to uh, apply for chemical engineering. And as I stated before, my brother was in chemical engineering. So he would tell me about some of his courses. And he told me about a couple of his different courses that he had to do at Ryerson. And I was really interested in them. And I, when I looked up the definition of chemical engineering, it was something along the lines of uh, taking raw materials and creating processes in order to produce um, a, a gener uh, to produce a product at the end. And I thought, why don't we take those processes and make them more sustainable so we can help the environment? If I could do that in the future, I know that that's going to be something that will uh, make me happy and I'd want to continue <clears throat> doing that job for a long time. So in the end, because of those reasons, I ended up picking chemical engineering uh, as my profession, which I want to do in the future. And right now I have completed first year at, of chemical engineering at the University of Waterloo. All right, so what is an engineer? So to become a Canadian engineer, you must first get an undergraduate degree in engineering from an accredited school, which is typically about four to five years long. And then at this point, you will receive an iron ring, and then you have the option of signing up as an engineering intern with PEO. And then to become a professional engineer, you must work for an additional four years in an engineering type job, and then apply for a professional engineering license. Next slide, please. But what really is an engineer? Well, in popular opinion, we say engineers are problem solvers, but they are so much more than that. An engineer is someone who hopes to change the world, someone who wants to improve the lives of other people, and someone who uses imagination and creativity to turn ideas into reality. And this is the message that we are trying to spread, to show everyone what an engineer truly is and break the stereotypes. The definition of an engineer can be so diverse and unique depending upon person to person, they are not just builders or fixers. They are innovators and have the power to make a really big difference in our lives. Next slide, please. So when you search up engineer on Google and you look at the images, these are the first images that pop up uh, in Google. So can you guys use the chat box and sort of see or identify the common themes that you see in the pictures? Like, is there anything that you see that all of these pictures sort of represent? Yes, uh, someone wrote white men in hard hats. Uh, Bumika, is there anything else you notice? Well, I noticed that all of them are holding some sort of blueprints, which signifies that they're all just building something or making a building, some, something related to that. Yeah, and someone else wrote um, they're mostly men, and that is true. Most of the people in this picture are men. There are only two females in this picture, and one of them is in the middle row, middle row, and then the other one is in the last row. And both of them, again, are wearing hard hats, and they're holding something which may look seem as a blueprint or something related to construction. <clears throat> so when you, when you think of an engineer, or even when children think of engineers, they mostly perceive engineers to be people that are construction workers, or they build buildings, or they're men in hard hats. And that's basically the stereotype that we're trying to break at Engineers of Tomorrow. We, we know that engineering can be a really diverse field. So people can go into, they can go into computer engineering, so they can build computers, they can go into software engineering, they can code, they can work at Microsoft, Google, they can also work in the food industry, they can work in pharmaceuticals with Sanofi. So there's a variety of different things that 
um, engineers do. And we want to break sort of the stereotype that is that engineers wear hard hats, they're male, they hold blueprints, and they only build buildings because that's not all that engineers do. In order to do this, we want to sort of break the stereotype by teaching children today through the EIR program and through other methods that engineers are people that solve problems to shape the world and change the world. And we need to tell kids today so that in the future, when they decide what they want to do, they'll think about engineering as they know it's not only people that build buildings, but people that do amazing things and do different things as well. So what is the EIR program? The EIR program is the Professional Engineers of Ontario, PEO, flagship outreach program. The program pairs engineers with schools to give presentations, do activities, and inspire students in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math, which is STEM. All right, so what the EIR program hopes to accomplish? Well, as Niadi said, the program aims to promote engineering and STEM. But our main goal is to create a positive experience regarding STEM and make a good and lasting impression and help inspire the kids to contribute and make a positive change in the world. We are not just focused on recruiting kids to become engineers. We want to help them understand what STEM is and maybe explore it as a career once they grow up. We want to show that every kid can be anything they want, even an engineer. Next slide, please. If you are new to the program, these are some helpful tips. So Logistics 101 for the EIR program. First of all, what you should do is define some expectations with your engineer. This program's success completely depends upon how you and your EIR communicate. This is a partnership between you two. And in order to meet these expectations, what you can do is um, you can make a goal of at least um, meeting once per month to discuss ideas and activities. You can do some preparation outside of the classroom so that when you are in, you can, everything flows properly. Also, um, you should come up with relevant content as a team. We highly suggest that it is ideally aligned with the curriculum so that it benefits the kids the most. Therefore, the engineer should know what the curriculum is throughout the school year for clarity purposes. Also, you should decide the best methods of communication and how frequently you will be in touch. The best thing to do is come up with a plan and sort of follow it throughout the year. Also, the EIR should generally be making hands-on society-based programming activities, such as what's on our website, eir.ca slash resources. What you can do is start with activities such as common ones like building blocks or Jenga or something like that. But then instead of engaging the students in building and making, ask them where is it going to go and why? Who will it help and how? Have them think about the society and sort of go beyond what is normally taught in the classroom. And most importantly, contact us if anything goes wrong. We will check in occasionally, but it's, it's mainly going to be all communication between you and your EIR. And if there is anything that you need to talk to us about, specifically contact Rebecca White. Next slide, please. So now we're going to move on to the interactive part of the webinar. We're going to be going through a couple of sort of um, issues or problems that could occur throughout the program. And we want you to type in the chat what you think should be done about it. So the first scenario or problem is communication issues. So you're excited to have the EIR program in your classroom next year but you haven't heard from your EIR yet. You're frustrated and worried that your students won't get to experience the exciting learning opportunities that the program offers. What do you do? If you guys have any uh, solutions to this problem, please write them down in the chat. Yes, someone wrote, contact us. Yes, you should contact us if you come through this problem. We can help uh, sort of contact the EIR or try to get into contact with them so then we can get you two to interact again. Yes, contact the person directly is another good example and contact Rebecca White. Yep. So yeah, these are some solutions that we came up with for this problem. So try reaching out to your EAR through email and phone. Communication is a two way street. And you can also reach out to your EAR team, which is Pumika, uh, Niati, me and Rebecca White. 
because we're always here to help. All right, so another scenario that we come across is um, curriculum issues. So your EIR is doing a fantastic job at engaging students and getting them excited about STEM, but what they haven't, but, but what they've been teaching doesn't line up with the curriculum. And you're worried as a teacher that you won't have time to cover everything you need to over the school year with the EIR, taking up at least one class per month. What do you do? So um, yes. someone wrote, talk with your EIR and provide some suggestions on what should be covered. I think that's a great solution. All right, so what we suggest that you do is talk to your EIR about what specifically you would like them to cover. And chances are there are several real world applications and activities that they can try look through the resources and activity ideas on our website. And if you find something interesting, see if your EIR would be interested in trying it out. Or email us. We're always here to help. Yeah, and someone will make a clear plan about what needs to be done, which I think, again, is a really good idea. Because if you have a clear plan in the beginning of the school year, it'll, you won't run into problems throughout the school year. So mm -hmm. uh, scenario number three is difficulty engaging students. Your EIR is very excited to be part of the program and share their knowledge and experience with students. But it is clear that it is not, it is their first time doing this sort of thing and are struggling to engage and relate to the students. What do you do? Uh, yeah, someone wrote offer assistance and co-teach. Uh, anyone yes, else? Sorry. Because you are the teacher and you have more experience dealing with your students. So that is, yes. Okay. And also someone said, give them strategies. Mm -hmm. Because they aren't teachers, yes. So some of the ways that we suggest you can address this problem is you can suggest ways for them to engage the students because um, the students that ha have uh, worked for you because you know your students the best. If there's something specific you can think of that they can improve on, make sure to point it out because constructive criticism is necessary for the EIRs to improve and have the greatest impact on the students. And as someone wrote in the chat, the EARs are not teachers, so it may be a bit of a struggle for them to get them engaged. So if you could provide as much assistance as you can to them, it would be amazing. This is the last scenario, uh, teaching situation changes. So you're halfway through the school year and you couldn't be happier with the EIR program, but unfortunately, you have to go on leave for personal reasons, such as you are moving to a different school or you are caught with an illness. What do you do? This is a very important question as it decides the fate of the program. So if you were in this situation, what do you think would be the best way to handle the situation? Yes, that is a good suggestion. Ask the EIR if they want to continue with your replacement teacher and then facilitate that. And also tell the EIR and let them know, let the administra administrator know that the program is successful. Yes, yes. So what we suggest that you do is um, let us know as soon as you can. Contact us and we'll try to get in touch with both of you. We'll try to see how we can help. And also, see if the teacher who's going to replace you is interested in continuing to host your EIR on a monthly basis. Also, you can try to find another teacher at the school interested in the program so that the EIR can stay at the school that they were assigned to. So, um, there's some resources available for that you can go and see. So the first one is how to wear your engineering hat webinar, which uh, is going to be happening soon. There's also uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter and we'll provide a lot of information on a monthly basis about um, what engineers of tomorrow is doing. 
You can also check out our website for project ideas, presentations, and more. So more at engineersoftomorrow.ca. And there's also going to be a program guide, which you can check out, which will contain a lot of um, sort of tips on the program, how to make the program successful, and also on activities that you could do in the classroom. Also, don't forget the upcoming events that we have. You can also join in and listen in to these webinars. On Wednesday, July 11th, we are going to host the Introduction to EIR Program for EIRs webinar. On July 18th, we will have the Diverse and Inclusive Messaging, which is for both teachers and EIRs. On 25th July, we will have Sharing Your Engineering Story. And we highly suggest that you come and listen into this webinar too, as it will be inspiring for all of, all of us. And on 15 September, we will have the in-person orientation. So this is the part of the presentation or webinar where you can ask us questions, or if you have any concerns or comments, you can write them down in the chat and we'll answer, with them, answer them.